Hello, every pony. Welcome back to Fandom Fridays, where we proceed to check out all the fanfics that are not pony related. Why? Because more likes Luthor. That's why. Next chapter. Till it to me, it gets completely went off the rails. How many DNA samples are we talking about? There's the DNA chick. There, the blood for the remains. We have Superman's DNA sample from the header in the Metropolis Museum. Check. The sample walks into the B. That's the one that messed the blood found on the roof of Tower of St. Marie Mare. Then there's the stuff from the Lex Fest. Right. It looks like it. On the count, it's organic, but it's not Kryptonian DNA. Then, which only matches the material from the Lex Fest. He needed his forehead. You know, it struck me as I knew Superman's DNA away. In case there are matches, but Metropolis PD, the FBI, and at least three more government organizations have it. So, what matches from the roof and the blood remains from the Wayne Mayor mass the sample team? Those mass the hair from the museum. Neither of those mass Batman sample. Mass. They mass. Why did Batman give them a sample then? They said Batman feared the samples were fakes and he had the real deal. Thinkers. What the egg hedge from Star Labs say to this? He was running an older version of the analysis program and made a mistake with compounding the generic load of the software, ran the sample again, and comparing it to the hair didn't mess the LexFest. So the organic material from the LexFest is not Superman's DNA. It's organic compound. Highly complicated and with a name as long as your arm. But no, it's not. Timmons felt weak at the knees. He looked at the lawyer, Jr. Here's Wonder Woman, handing me the case of the century. The only thing I thought- Marcus, I should have checked the hell out of that evidence, and then I tried. Sir, I have friends at the DCPD. They say Batman would never- They also looked the other way when he showed up with a different boy wonder. He sampled, no one else found any value the jury to disregard- Sir, this was the big gun, and now? We're not even saying blanks. Raising all kinds of reasonable doubt with the witnesses we scrounged up. The rogues gallery laid waste to said football bastard didn't even jaywalk when Superman disappeared and when he died. He was giving the Caltech. Every alibi checks. Every place has a clean mug in the security teams. Maybe that's his mistake. Mm -hmm. When has Lice Luthor been that easy to find? That gets us nowhere. He is a public figure. And being in the limelight is not going to suddenly convince the jurors he's guilty. Plus, the timestamps have not been altered. That's him in those places at those times. What else we got? We're missing witnesses. Granted, and we're trying to borrow the fortress. Oh yeah, that's a good score. We have a bunch of missing persons, but they can't all be traced back to Luthor. Because not everyone worked in that score. Not everyone was dropless. Our case was more based on the physical evidence, and the witnesses were an added bonus. Because you know how flip be. But then the evidence turned to shit. Tim, we had a case. We had DNA, witnesses, a digital fingerprint, damning testimony. I thought it, and it was airtight and ironclad. Yeah, it's looking worse than a sieve. He closed his eyes and pointed the phone. Get some takeout. We're in for another long night. Uh, the other ironclad witness to Prio's case. Jennifer Adler did not confirm anything said during the interviews. Boring picked up on this, and what little testimony she could offer would bolster his case. He tossed it out with an objection. Mrs. Adler, I first want to say I'm sorry for the loss of your husband. Thank you. And I'm sorry for the loss of your child. How old was she? Six. Would you mind telling us what happened to her? Loring said, emphatically. And I went to take a shower. She managed to open the balcony window. When was this? June 12, 2012. Two? No. Three weeks before he was hired by Glexcore. I have the notes for the police officer in the day in question. Your husband kept saying he stood our savior. Where was he? When was your husband's? Is it Superman? She died. Yes. Um, Superman dealt with an average of 27 crimes, 9 accidental falls, and 4 suicides in the list with the state scenario of Metropolis Police Department. Had he been around, he would have saved your daughter. Did this event have any change in your husband's behavior? Did you ever snap? It doesn't change your behavior! I'm sorry, Mrs. Nazler. I'll replace. How did your husband feel about Superman? Like any other Metropolitan, he loved him. Did he ever talk about him? Yes, like I said, a fly just brightened your day. While he was running through Bessel Boulevard, he caught a malfunction and crane that would have fired an MTA bus. He said it thrilled to them to see how they got to live the rest of their lives because he was there. 
in your circle of friends and family, how many people have been directly or indirectly saved by Superman? I see quite a few. No, six of my friends. The Hell's Gate bridge collapse. The first one, my uncle's to the ER when a truck sideswaves his bike. The town rampage to tear me around up. So, Superman was there for them? Yes. For your family and friends? Really? He didn't show up? Yes. Now, it's possible your husband resented Superman for not being there for Sybil? Jennifer hesitated. Isn't it possible, Miss Adler, that he felt that Superman had let him down? That Superman failed him and his daughter? I can't bear it, can't defend the stress of losing a child. But isn't it possible to work? Work. That some happened in this. Isn't it possible that, by blaming that score, your husband was defying his absence? No. Her voice was by a whisper, barely picked up by the microphone. Mrs. Adler, what did your husband. What did he say to you in the days after the accident? I don't know. I don't remember. Didn't he say he should have been there? He could. He should have. Jennifer Adler's face broke into a rictus of pain as tears flowed from her eyes. Yes. She moved in closer, carrying a box of tissues. She asked in a metal, metal, metal voice, Mrs. Adler, is it possible that if you simply last saw to Mr. Luthor, his powerful man he personally knew, in the place where he spent most of his waking hours, when the Metropolis Marvel failed him, is it possible that he just transferred his feelings to the other constant presence of Metropolis? Objection, Your Honor! Mr. Adler is not a psychologist if he did not have Mr. Adler's mental state. It was her husband. Who is better than her to know? She may answer the question. Tried to regain her composure, but failed. She sobbed. Yes, it's possible. Mrs. Adler, was your husband ever approached by Bruce Wayne? Objection! Revelance! Grounds for the defense, Your Honor. He has some latitude, Miss Lloyd, but not much. Mrs. Adler, was he ever approached by Bruce Wayne? Yes, he was. When? July. He invited us out for dinner at Dynasty. What did they talk about? Mostly about tech. I didn't understand any of it. Did he offer your husband a job? Yes. He said that for all of its work, LightScore wasn't the best place to be. He offered to match his salary and give him a job at Wayne Tech. Interesting. Before working for LightScore, did he apply to other places? Yes. Cord, Queen, Star Labs. Did he apply to Wayne Tech? Yes. And he only tendered an offer after he was employed by LexCorp. Mrs. Adler, I'm sure your husband was a very gifted, talented man, but why do you think Bruce Wayne himself came to talk to him? Objection! Mrs. Adler is not an expert, nor is he qualified to talk about Bruce Wayne's behavior. Sustained! Mrs. Adler, what else do you remember of Bruce Wayne saying at diner? He said that things could get messy in LexCorp. And if he wanted now, he could have a cussy no job at Wayne Tech. That Lex Corp didn't deserve his brains. Didn't deserve his brains. What did your husband say about this offer? Do you think about it? No. My husband was a very loyal man. He bristled when Wayne said he should keep his eyes and ears open. We talked about it and liked what he had on Lex Corp. What he could do there given a chance. How do you feel about Lex Luthor? Mr. Luthor is a very kind and wonderful man. After Richie died, he sent us a check for his life insurance and stock options, along with a wonderful letter of encouragement. We lost Richie, but me and my daughters are set for life. When the other companies pinch the pennies out of your hand, let's go our his door. Thank you, Mrs. Adler. No. Lex smiled and nodded as Jennifer Adler. Lex Timmons called his final witness. Tyler, how long have you been head of research at Lex Gore? 2002. And why were you from my own Marcus and his team when the sabotage generator? Could you tell me the location of your laboratory? Yes, it's in Site 1, on the North Pole's research station, currently under less core control. That's right. Tell me, Dr. Tyler, what kind of work do you do at Site 1? We source research. We're finding practical applications almost every day. Judging by the number of patents and medical trial permits, you've seen that. Now, what is it about Site 1 that's allowed you as an apartment to make such breakthroughs? Are you kidding? It's a researcher's dream. It's had to the gills of technology so advanced. It makes everything we've done as obsolete as kiniform writing. It's there. Energy beams, energy protectors, advanced computers, crystal storage systems, plant life not native to our planet, gravity chambers, still those wonderful toys. They're hardly toys, Mr. Timmons. 
We've had to be very careful with handling everything. Who owns all those items? Escort does. Did you know that Site 1 was really Superman's Fortress of Solitude? No, I didn't. So you didn't know you were in his fortress. His super raw character! Is your chief for the world. Ransacking his treasures. Wait a minute. I didn't know it was Superman's place. He had a place where he could kick back and hang his cape, Tyler. Did you know Superman had a fortress? Because it wasn't one of the rights of before. That's hardly... I knew. And with good reason. I mean, the top of Everest has 3G, so you could tweak when you reach the summit. If people knew where Superman's home was, there would be a line from there to... We were not really because we had permission. They had permission to be there. Only knew it was the alien artifact repository. Alien artifact repository? Yes, sort of like a real life Area 51. Stuff confiscated by these air galactic troublemakers, paraphernalia from taken from your garden variety mad scientists. Superman never figured into the equation. How did you find out about the place? Who told you? We were taken there by Bruce Wayne on behalf of the Wayne Foundation. Like what? Timmons felt dizzy for a second, had to lean on his set to keep on falling. Can you prove any of that? Yes, I kept copies of every document that passed through my hands. He found his pocket. When did you find out it was Superman's fortress? When your people contacted me. And for that, I still think it was. How did you end up working for Bruce Wayne? We went out on the door. Go to his research. We were a small group of big ideas and almost no cast. We approached the Wayne Foundation where we were public research. Our results pleased Mr. Wayne very much. After that, we got a meeting with Mr. Wayne himself. Tell us we had done a great job, and he was moving us to his special projects brand. See what it's for, before 2012. Why? I don't know what his name was. But Mr. Wayne felt an intense dislike. Sorry to say, but I just took the money and got lost first. I passed the results to Wayne in the best core. I was taking it on. I ditched Wayne. I'm sorry for that, Mr. Lothor. Why, 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 why would Wayne get involved in this? You may have many secrets, Mr. Timmons. Do you know what the subject of the first study? It was about negating the flash frictionlessness aurora. Mr. Wayne was very big on finding ways to deal with everyone in the superhero community. At this point, even one woman went to gas. Everyone? Yeah, pretty much. We didn't lack resources or research material. You know, we're off topic, Mr. Tyler. Please concentrate on the area we're talking about. What's his life score in the fortress? It's all in the flash drive. In here are all the memos, emails, and studies we conducted on map behalf of Mr. Wayne. There's a list of I interview with the Superman stating quite clearly that the place and all its contents were used by Mr. Wayne. I found that video when we finally got the mainframe from Wayne Enterprise. I'm including the authorized thesis granted by the Air National Arctic Fortress. Argument evaporated before his eyes. Let's go ahead and no permission to work in the Arctic Circle. That's right. Wayne Enterprise has got them for Cortez research. All the official papers were in our name. In order to keep Mr. Luthor in the dark, Mr. Wayne was very interested in putting Lescor and Superman's Fortress together and using our research group. For what purpose? I don't know. We approached Lescor with the lure of the alien artifact repository and requested funding. At first, Lescor wasn't convinced, but after the death of their research, we were ideal candidates. I'm sorry I couldn't say anything, but I had a very blinding confidentiality contract with Mr. Wayne. I'm pretty sure my chances of working again in the scientific community are slim to none now, but I don't care. I'm not going to railroad Lex Luthor for some crooked scheme of Bruce. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Timmons walked back to take his seat. Dr. Tyler, do you want to know what this stand? It's ordered by Mr. Wayne. Your Honor, we haven't had a chance to evaluate the evidence. Ruled. He was a witness for prosecution. Dr. Tyler, continue to question. Yes. He came up with the idea of a beam that, in with Kentucky with Kryptonite, would store kinetic energy in Superman's bones. The presser would build past his breaking point, and he'd explode within minutes of being dosed. Mr. Wayne wanted to check us to numbers and see if the problem was it feasible. Yes, but it would take an obscene amount of money to make it real. to that project. He kept the blueprints and the prototype. How many did your team prepare? Tyler stood to the seat. Well, how many? At least two for each Justice Leaguer and one for every second and third stringer. What did you do with them? Wayne kept everything. He has something about a warehouse at Gotham. He gave the idea of putting together those projects. But well, superheroes have saved the world many times over. He said he needed to know how to stop them in every event that they went rogue. Well, let me tell you that we did not build death rays or killing beams. 
We worked with the science behind them, and we had small-scale prototypes that could possibly use to get a convenience, let alone kill a cape. Not lethal. Yes, but they could be modified to be lethal. We never... Mr. Timmons? Timmons... Or I agree in furious whispers. Mr. Timmons, are you ready to proceed? Bullshit's gonna take me! Mr. Timmons! Red face, Timmons stood up first here. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecutor rests. Mr. Lloyd, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Over the course of this trial, we've heard from the prosecution that the is a man of wealth, of fast worldly connections, a man of science, and a man of business. With a clear agenda regarding the soup that has tried to paint Mr. Luthor as that man, and enough evidence to discover who fits this profile to a T. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the one man behind the death of Superman and the cover up, involving scientists, post employees, backward deals, and secret facilities. The one who benefited the most from pinning the man blame on Alexa Luthor is none other than Bruce Wayne. Or, as the criminal world has known him for years, Batman.